Okay, folks. Uh, welcome to the call for investigation uh, for March 6th. And we're talking about money and other things. And we have a great show planned for you with a desert of forbidden knowledge, forbidden history. And go ahead, Patricia, introduce your guest. My yes, name is Donald Dwyer. Huh? Really appreciate. Can you hear me okay, Don? Oh, yeah, I hear you fine. Okay, great. Welcome, everyone. Appreciate your listening. And please let this be your springboard to what you have the, you know, your own part in what needs to be done. Because this is teamwork, and uh, Desert has a whole lot of information for you. The hidden history, oh boy, is there a lot of hidden history. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right? Desert, he likes to go by Desert Owl, has quite a past you know, history of trying to get the truth out to you. And uh, Desert, do you want to introduce yourself further? Well, sure. I, um, I've been a, a student of um, the Sacred Scriptures, uh, serving Heavenly Father all my life, and uh, his son, Yeshua, the Mashiach, commonly known as Jesus the Christ. And then in about 1990s, I got into... Uh, well, I got stuck in a truck is what happened, and I started, and rather than talking on the CB with a bunch of idiots, I, I listened to talk radio 24-7, and then after about a year of doing that, I, I realized that we, uh, you keep hearing things over and over again. People say they call in with information, and I began to realize uh, the, the Ponzi scheme that was going on that was uh, uh, affecting our world, so I... Uh, got involved uh, creating an organization called Council for the National Interest and then uh, I was doing radio getting uh, invited on and then ultimately was offered my own program once I did uh, for my second organization called uh, United Truckers Defending the Constitution. So from uh, there I guess they could say the rest is history that's uh, 1997 um, when the uh, IRS put me out of the truck and uh, I lost my house on a lake. They uh, got infiltrated. Uh, uh, their their uh, minions are everywhere, so uh, they did their best to take me down. And uh, I've um, uh, regrouped and um, got taken down again in another way. And, and, and so um, it's a pretty dark world because we're uh, given this pastel color of red, white, and blue and um, and God, God and country when the truth is we're really a uh, uh, an occult world that uh, is just simply playing on the, the, uh, the people using them for their own uh, benefit and gain, whether it's a uh, ritual sacrifice of children and the pedophile rings or uh, the, um, uh, you know, the grand deception, just like everybody thinks uh, Washington, D.C. is relevant when actually the Federal Reserve is running the show and they're just the puppet show in Washington. Yes. You know, I've I, uh, been, been a student of words and uh, that's really how I define everything that I see is by the words. And, um, and when I got involved, I realized the words they were using were very relevant to all of my previous 20 years of study in ancient history. And so I've made the connection that the people running our world today uh, have always been running the world. And it's been a shell game right from the beginning. And so that's what my Forbidden History talks about. Yeah, well, uh, it's so forbidden oh, yeah. and you're, uh, you're quite dark. You, can you get any light on yourself? A little bit of lighting? Otherwise, a little better? Let me try this. Uh, you're getting darker. Uh, oh, there we go. Yeah, that, that helps. That's interesting. Took me down in 1997 because they went they went after me in 1997 also interesting timing and yeah they've taken me down re repeatedly particularly IRS in 97 98 99 and if uh, and I've made you know my own estate repeatedly and each time they took me down of course I wanted to know why and that's why my searching for answers so uh, in your searching for answers. And yeah, we have a little more light on you now. Uh, anyway, what um, have you run across of what people need to know about the, the hidden history of the biblical backgrounds? Well, uh, basically, um, you know, before they played all the tricks on America, uh, they were doing it to the Euro peons. And as I said, I define things by words, and, and peonage is uh, um, a, a late coming form of uh, volunteer slavery or contract slavery and it was perfected very much in the South American continent, Central America, and but then ultimately perfected in uh, the U.S. So the word peon, peonage, then we talk about the, the Europeans and and uh, when you go back into Rome, uh, they all came into Rome on the, the, 
the apion way, but if you know the rule of the letters, you can turn the A off and you got the peon way. So you can see they the joke's been on us from the beginning, right, uh, Patricia? Yes. If I mean, I don't look at myself as a peon, but they certainly look at us as a uh, peon. Mm -hmm. And and, yeah, and so peon, uh, I feel right. Yeah. So I'm sorry, Don. Oh, I think they, yeah, we've been peon though, right? So. <laughs> That's another way of putting it. And and so oh, uh, so anyway, question. what I what I realized was that uh, the what people are calling the new world order, there, there's nothing new under the sun, and I don't even call it the old world order anymore. I just call it the one world order because it's been a one world uh, operation. Uh, ever, uh, in other words, a lot of the researchers, like Graham Hancock uh, in particular, and his uh, and his circle, uh, all uh, pretty well acknowledged that whatever came on the scene with all the great technology of building all these great monuments uh, with giant stones that we can't even cut today or move, uh, yeah, and yeah. Uh, and and everything. These are worldwide pyramid cultures. They go around the world. Uh, basically, then they had the technology at the same time with the uh, anti-gravity. Uh, what kind of power equipment did they use to cut these blocks and drill holes in them? Obviously, they had all, all it, and not to mention to make these statues. Uh, in particular, what we see in uh, Mitzrayim, uh, which uh, uh, they switched out the name in, uh, 300 years ago, 350 years ago, and called it Egypt, but it's Mitzrayim. And, um, and so basically, this one world order... Uh, was a pyramid culture, and I think uh, because Orion was pointing his bow at the bull, which is really the alpha, the A in our alphabet, and also a symbol of the pyramid, uh, that was their, the cue for all the people to get to work, slave, and start building pyramids, so you don't have time to think, just like they enslaved us today with all of our 40-hour week, work week, and we uh, just have enough to pay our bills and got to go back to work on Monday. So, uh, so they've done a great job of controlling us, but they started with the uh, words in the beginning, the slave was not even allowed to read. But then they said, you know, we could have more productive slaves if they could read a little. And so from that point, they then said, okay, but if we give them words, we're going to give them abbreviated words. So they never give us the full uh, part of the word. And uh, and that's part of the trickery that they played on us. The words are corrupted, and they ultimately controlled our words in the West after they uh, destroyed the original alphabet in the East, which is on the driver's license, those capital letters called Phoenician, which actually go back to the original Sanskrit. Um, they uh, they control all of our words out of the Vatican at a place called the College of Abbreviators, uh, run by the Jesuit Curiae. So it's it's quite a legacy, quite a story. And only we only have thirty minutes here, so I'm just trying to jump around and uh, give some uh, splice of it. Well, it, it it looks as though we could go longer now. I didn't mention that to you, but what. Um, is important is when we take a look at today's world where can someone uh, look for the answers to what you just said it's the folks, but where would you suggest for them to take and take a good look where to start well, that's the hardest thing uh, really to do because uh, one they control publishing and therefore will yeah. never get the full gamut in other words everything's filtered right Oh, so even my my book is a good example of it. They took the conclusion off. They took the guts of the what, and after I had it approved of what was supposed to be out, they, they took it out and then published it that way. It's like, sorry, yeah. folks. That, that's <laughs> why I won't have my work published by any uh, uh, pro, you know private uh, publishing company. I want to publish my own work because I'm in control of it. Then that's part of it. So uh, so there's a lot of information on the internet, but the. Uh, uh, ha most people don't have the uh, the savvy to be able to sift through, uh, you know, all that information because they don't have the foundation, right? That, that's what we need first, is the foundation uh, to go on. And so uh, there's uh, a, a real challenge because they've taken over, taken over our uh, our school systems, you know, and um, and then we use the word education. Well, uh, look, the first two letters, one of uh, the uh, you know, the things I'm adept in is the etymology of words, and I'm uh, adept in uh, the Indo-Germanic mother tongue, which uh, is basically the Aramaic, and I predate the Hebrew and the Greek uh, basically by 5,000 years because we have to go back to that which was first. So the parent root of the word education is ed, 
and it's opposite of the word add. Add means you, right? You add things, add them up, right? Ed, as an yeah. editor, mm -hmm. means that you remove. Uh -oh. So right in the very word education means not, it's not what they're telling us, it's but what they have removed from our curriculum so we're not in the loop and have no idea what's going on, right? And it's so true. They don't teach us about money in school, the nature of money, that's totally uh, uh, fraudulent. They don't teach us the nature of law, because if we knew the nature of law, we know how to protect ourselves. So right. uh, so that's another scam. You know, it's just, it's uh, they we're, when, by the time we graduate with a Masonic mortarboard on our head, uh, we've got mud in our eye and we don't know anything. We can't see because the mud of the Norda board is in our eye. Huh. Well, way to say it. That's, that's interesting. Now, we've been indoctrinated more than educated. So, yeah. That's right. That's uh -huh. right. We've been told told what to think. Uh, no free thinking or you won't get a good grade. You know. And, and when you go to college, then you have to pay your tuition at the door. Isn't that what we call the intuition? you got to pay your tuition, intuition. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. No free thinking. We're going to indoctrinate you and tell you what to think. And yeah. they want to go totally against God's free will that they're supposed to have, but they want to take it away in every way, shape, form they can. And lack of knowledge is a real key on exactly that. Yeah. yeah. So so I uh, I ended up with, uh, I um, homeschooled, I did home church, uh, tried to do all the, the things to separate myself the scriptures i think this uh, could, going back to your question uh, patricia what happened with me was um, i saw the conflict in religion uh all different family members were in different religious uh, groups none of them talked to each other and so what i said was i'm going to separate what the scripture told me to do was become a separate people separate yourself and i will have supper with you that's what the scripture said so i separated myself from all of the confusion and I started reading, and I ended up with uh, 2,000 books on the shelf. And I, I was reading, always reading like 12 books at a time. I'd go through them once or twice a day. Um, and, um, and so I began to piece things together and make discoveries. But it's really the Heavenly Father that uh, um, the anointing of the Father, which is the anointing of truth, uh, and nice. not a part of any lie, that, um, that was guiding me. And so I, I really do say I'm not smart enough to figure all this stuff out, but it is the anointing of my Redeemer, uh, my Savior, that uh, has allowed me to see uh, uh, with my own eyes what I needed to see to realize the, the great uh, charade that's going on uh, with us. It's the greatest show on earth, and it's a great tragedy because people are suffering, and, it, and, it's, and it's endless, and, um, and, the, and it's not, it never needed to be. There, there, there's so much wealth and prosperity and resource of the earth there that there's nobody has to be in need but there's a bunch of greedy um you know psychopaths that uh, hate our guts and want to drink our blood and they're, they're doing it under the guise of the babylonian talmud and that's why judges black dressed in black robes are railroading innocent people into prison uh because they're uh sitting on the bench was which, which is the bank in latin because they're working for the um you know the banksters or they don't have their job and um, and the business is good and then they put your birth certificate on wall street and that's where they used to sell slaves on the open market, off the ship. Yes, yes. That's right. Awesome. You, you, you mentioned uh, facade. Is that right? Yeah. Uh, and so can you define that facade a little bit, describe it a little bit? Well, th right. They're, they're coming to us under the guise of benevolence. And, and, um, and most people would say, well, you know, the politicians wouldn't lie to us. Uh, and so they're, they're, it's uh -huh. a. Uh, of course not. They've got they got they've got the news media and the uh, Hollywood in their corner. So in other words, my contention would be that Washington D.C. could never stand on its own if it weren't for the fact that the news media and the and the and Hollywood prop it up. It's a prop. They're so sure, pathetic. Sure. You know, they're just absolutely all, all bought and pathetic paid for, yeah. to look at, aren't they? Yeah. 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 Oh. And they're so scared of losing their job if they, they even try to start doing something right. Oh, anyway, it's yeah, catch 22. I know, so it's so true. So, when you get into some of the symbolisms, where can someone start to take a look at different oh, things that are around them? Where would you start? Yeah, well, for the for the benefit of being, uh, what, my, what my contention would be based on how they edge you 
uh, or uh, Howard Griswold, uh, one of my law researcher friends, used to say, "Educated us." Um, <laughs> yeah. They. Uh, you, what I would recommend, because what's mo what I what I ultimately realized was that, based on m my development with symbolism and uh, etymology, uh, root words and such, um, it, the, the the bottom line is people don't know how to read because they were given a lie, and and told what a word means and uh, and how to pronounce it, and yet um, we might come to think that the English uh, diction is. Uh, uh, very sophisticated because we can communicate but the truth is our English English for angler and hooking the English uh, going back to what Anglo-Saxons um, the uh, the English is actually the most corrupt bastardized form of communication pig Latin uh, that we could ever imagine when one knows the truth and they study the Aramaic and the Indo-Germanic uh, root of all of these words because there is a root and you'd also want to study the pseudo-Sanskrit because it is not the original Sanskrit, what I said earlier was that the uh, writing on the driver's license is actually the original alphabet. So they're hiding, they're hiding the most important um, graphic symbolism of our original nature within the capital letters uh, on our driver's license, which is called the Phoenician alphabet, but it was before the Phoenicians, it was in existence. And, um, and that alphabet, uh, which no doubt was perfected in, in its modern form by the Kabbalists because they know the secrets. Um, and uh, it, 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 it tells a story about life. So of all the symbolism that they could study would be to study the alphabet because they're studying symbolism and the original diction uh, at the same time because each letter is worth a multiple of words when one can define them. And so, so the A is the alpha, it was first, um, and uh, and it represents the pyramid. It represents the projection of light, and uh, and then you know and then you just go down. So there's books. There's books that talk about it, um, and um, and that's that's where um, you know the diction opened up to me. But symbolism in general, I've been reading for several years uh, an encyclopedia on symbolism and also a dictionary on symbolism. And apparently that one out of Spain originally was by a Jesuit, and certainly the those people know the symbols better than anyone, the secret societies. So, so studying the walls of the Vatican, uh, we're told not to make images or, or, or uh, idols, but yet the occult do. And actually those images and statues and uh, iconography on the wall are telling a story. And so we can read it because the secrets are right there in front of us if we can interpret mm -hmm. the meaning. Right here, right here. Yeah, Will Wilson had a question for you. Um, I'm Dr. Will P. Wilson. I work with Dr. Richard Benson. He was the head of research for the JPL. He died in 1991. Uh, I think he was pulsed by a satellite weapon. I was working with him on in deciphering Alpha Arahamaic language and frequency at the time that he died. And he... All right. We went away. Will, what happened? Yeah, we just lost him. Will? I can't. He's gone. Uh, Will. Will. Hello. Will. Yeah, you're back. I think you're back. Uh, and you did again. what? Did what? Try it again. I guess you um, cut us out. And, and I had worked with Dr. Richard Benson. He was the head of research for NASA and the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. And I worked with him for about seven years. I was working with him to decipher his incredible research on Alpha Arithmetic mathematics and language and harmonics. And I'm sure that they murdered him using satellite technology in 1991. I wanted you to know this. And all the research that I had is now gone because we made sure that it would be. But I want you to know about Dr. Richard Benson. Is it yeah. wiped off the internet now? Oh, is it's, it all, available it's, for it's way gone. They oh, made yeah. sure That's everything was going to But he was one of the greatest, he was the head of research uh, for the Jet Propulsion Laboratory at the time mm -hmm. when I was working with him. Yeah, so he was more of a free thinker, not an insider, apparently. No? Well, they don't want us to know things. Well, that's you know, what he was just saying, which a total agreement on. You name it. My life alone, they've done everything in their power to not let anything be known. Even though I'm on this show and so on, there's certain things if I had to talk about, I'd be off so fast. But anyway, uh, please continue. Okay, well... Uh you know, Confucius uh, said that um, 
signs and symbols rule the world and not words nor law. So, mm. so literally when I um, rolled over into the political activism in the early 1990s, that was the thing that got me. I'm looking at all the symbols and nobody gets the picture, right? Because yeah. we're not indoctrinated into the, uh, uh, the mysticism of the symbol, which is actually the most uh, archaic form of communication on the planet. Uh, even the primitives could recognize feature and color and design and and it was the first way they um you know you know in other words just like when the aryans came on the scene which are uh, paramount in the story of the ancient yep. uh pyramid civilization and the uh, the gra uh, anti-gravity vimana and the free energy technology and all the stuff that they ultimately had before the, the great flood um mm -hmm. they um, they referred to these aryans as the sky gods and the sun gods and and the interpretation of that story has been distorted and i um would conclude it's uh, it's by design because they don't want the truth out about the origin of the Aryan and the uh, the the Nazi uh, philosophy that is synonymous with the word NASA. It's just another uh, slant of a, of a word. Even Nazi is abbreviated. As I said, they abbreviated all the words, and it goes back to the original uh, word Nazare, and that's actually. Uh, Another lie would be the one about Jesus came from Nazareth. There was no Nazareth um, until Constantine's mother went to um, Jerusalem and then uh, founded uh, the phony Mount Sinai, the phony place where Yeshua was supposed to have been crucified, the phony Nazareth, because they were doing a, a cover-up on the original story of uh, the Redeemer of the universe because they had to create their version so they could control the people. They were moving away from Mithraism and disguising Mithraism as quote Christianity, so uh, so so Na so when they were talking about Jesus of Nazareth, they weren't s the original. It wasn't where he was from, but it had to do with what he was. He was a Nazare. A Nazare now means that which came down. The Czar is the power word, like Caesar uh, or Kaiser or the Ashkenazi um, Khazarians. Um, Switzerland, you got, uh, and originally Egypt was uh, Mitzar Rayam. You see, the word Zar is the power word, and the Nazare as the ray of light that comes down. So the Nazare means one that came down with the power of the sun. You see, that's what Yeshua was, right? The man that could heal anybody in a moment from blindness or, or, or crippling defects. Um, and so the Arians are the antithesis who. Yeshua was uh, being a Aryan Nazare who came down as the uh, the last in the line of the kings of Israel, and so the Aryan movement, which is where we get the word arrogant, are the antithesis to the truth. There were two Aryan lines that came down through Adam and Eve and uh, through Enoch. Uh, well, they bypassed Enoch because they broke away uh, at the time of Enoch uh, and went and mated with the children of Cain. So, so they were the ones who founded Mitzrayim, which they then, 300 years ago, started calling Egypt because they didn't want us to know about the power, power word Mitzrayim. Uh, it's, so it's, it's the greatest show on earth. Imagine that the word Egypt only came 350 years ago, and mm -hmm. all of academia across the board has moved away from the original word there, uh, of Mitzrayim. There never was a, an Egypt in the sense of the word. It is a modern-day creation to cover the original meaning of these words. Uh, it's the smoking gun, I call it, the grand smoking gun. Well, and if you look back, it's the Jesuits that made the changes. But also, if you see the line of David, you know, you're supposed to believe that it stopped right there, or I'm supposed to stop with Nebuchadnezzar, or, you know, several different things. They tried to say it never continued well in the Bible. You know, it's, it's, it goes on forever. And it has. Uh, and this is one of the mean things that, uh, such as Clinton, uh, has been using that the lineage of David is to this day uh, very re definitely represented. And uh, so they, you know, all of this is hidden. And all of this, you're not supposed to know anything about it because then you could know what has been happening, what is happening, who's been doing how, what, how, and why. And all of it, you know, it's like this secret service. 
they built the, uh, their whole headquarters as a Nazi, you know, emblem. Now they've tried to change it because uh, obviously it was <laughs> so blatant. Uh, you know, they had to start answering for it. But um, please do continue. Okay, well then we have, uh, coming back to um, and continuing on your question, we go to Washington. So, so people can read the symbol. So every uh, State of the Onion address, uh, they uh, take him into the uh, the speaker's house, and there we got on both sides of the wall the uh, fasci, and nobody gets the picture of what that fasci on the wall means. It comes back from Roman, uh, you know, Roman law, and um, and it, it has to do with uh, uh, world power, world domination. Fasci is fascism, and uh, it's corporatism, and the 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 the, the battle axe, the the battle axe that's in the middle was the, the real real power weapon because uh it comes from the, we get the word berserk from the battle axe because it was uh, uh at one point called the berserker axe or the berserker battle axe because uh an axe can actually take on two or three swords so it's more powerful and so it was really the axe that conquered the world and not the sword the axe not only was a power weapon and, and the uh, the celtic which means killing technology that were the the puppets for the Aryans. Um, they were the Phoenicians. They were the Canaanites. The redhead spotted. Um, they when they were on their ships and conquering the world, they'd get off their ship and they'd literally take off all their clothes, because all the primitive people were were uh, taken aback by all this red, fiery red hair and all their spots all over their body. And then they start swinging their berserker axe, and one guy would be happy to take on ten guys at one time with the berserker battle axe, and that's where the term going berserk comes from. But not only could the, the axe, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, take on a great number of men with just swords, it was so it was like a secret technology, so to speak, of its day. It, most people wanted swords when the, uh, the, the real merchants uh, were, were using the battle axe, but it could also craft a ship. So, so it was not only your weapon, but it was your primary tool for cutting trees and for crafting a ship or a raft, whatever you needed to, uh, you know, to go somewhere else. And so, uh, so then all the black ebony rods that are around the, uh, the black for the darkness, for the occult, or the black ebony rods then also uh, symbolizing all of the states. Each rod represented a different state. All the states united, tied together around the axe and the leather, tied by the leather, as one, so so that's what we see in um, the shell game that is played. Like uh, with Nazi Germany, they had Mussolini of Italy. They had um, some other states working with them. Even secretly, America and Chase Manhattan Bank and the Bush family secretly uh, bringing money and other um, uh, military uh, necessities, uh, uh, automobiles, or or you know, types of auto machinery and uh, what have you, Coca-Cola even, and uh, not to mention the poisons that they used against people. So all of the uh, symbolism wrapped up in that uh, fasci, nobody ever says, hey, what is that doing there? And yet we all go on not our head. We still think that calling your congressman, congressman is going to make a difference when he's on the string. And if he don't do his job and what he's told, he won't be there. It's all a shell game. And it's... And for me, the good news is it's not ours because uh, I know now, you know, that uh, becoming a political political activist, and when I ended up on a concrete slab looking at a concrete ceiling, wondering how did I get here when I got railroaded and framed by uh, these occultists, um, I um, uh, I realized the profound truth of it all. That uh, that uh, it goes back to one uh, ancient sage who said. Uh, uh, do uh, do you wish to save the world from all of the degradation and destruction that it seems destined for? Well, if you do, then you must quietly step away from all of those shallow mass movements and then quietly begin to go to work upon your own self-awareness because we are not of this world. We are strangers here. And so the important aspect of all this is to wake up to the to the to the shell game and the and the diversions. like uh, you know, they got everybody worried about, North Korea, he's got, apparently got missiles, and they say he can put uh, nuclear devices on there. Well, the truth is there's never been a missile at any time in history 
that has ever shot off a nuclear device because they can't do it. You see, the best the best art of war is the art of deception. It's it's more uh, convenient, less expensive, and and it, and if you can control people's minds, you you got them, right? You got them. So. Uh, not so, sure. uh, so, it, so there it, are. It, they're, they're, so, if a nuclear device ever went off here mm -hmm. in America, and they blame Korea, it would have been land-based, preset, probably by the Jesuits, and then and then blamed on somebody else because that's how the game works. And we've had to stop them over and over. Yes, right. It was def definitely inside the job over and over. Yeah, the new the One World Order would never give the power of nuclear technology to a dozen different countries because ultimately it could be used against them. So they use one, and that's the uh, red, white, and blue USA. And um, so, so everything else is smoke and mirrors. Um, you know, it was, uh, uh, I used to interview um, uh, Vatican assassins, uh, Eric, Mon Eric uh, Phelps. And uh, Eric uh, John Phelps, he uh, wrote a, an enormous work, the, uh, um, the Vatican assassins, and in there, mm -hmm. uh, he talks about how the uh, the bombs that were going over Japan, uh, Nagasaki and Hiroshima, that they were just flare bombs that were dropped out of the planes. And what happened was the Jesuits were on the ground with the uh, the bomb already predisposed and set. That the uh, the nuclear device is so sensitive that uh, not only does it have to be placed properly sensitively, but it can't even be exploded until a certain point in in the sky when the sun is set up in the air because there's a connection with the atomic uh, fusion and the uh, the sun. So all of these things have to work just perfectly for this device to work. It may be more advanced now. It could be, but um, I will be the ultimate yes, skeptic. You know, much more advanced now. It's such as the mind control back then. Is, yeah, you know, and then like so much compared to now. Yeah. Yeah, and then after the the bombs go off on the ground and they. Uh, oh, by the way. The, the communities, uh, it was well brought out by uh, uh, a gentleman I found on a Google search, uh, David, uh, let me see if I can grab it here, David, uh, David Dionisi, I found him on a Google search and he was very kind to give me the DVD here, uh, where are you going? Right, right there, okay, that's it. All right, yeah, The Secret of about. Nagasaki, okay, mm -hmm. Let's see if I can get his... Uh, yeah, <laughs> I'm not used to doing this here. Hang on. What's going on, Desert? All right, let me get closer. Here we go. Okay. Okay, David J. Dionisi, and um, I don't know what his website is. Let me see if it's on here. No, I don't see it. But just do a Google search on him. He was kind enough to send me a couple books. He, he quit making big money in the financial markets to expose this stuff. But basically, um, the and he, he's the only one who calls the spade a spade. Everyone wants to call the the uh, the secret society out of Yale, uh, Skull and Bones. He calls it what it really is. It's the Brotherhood of Death, mm -hmm. and um, and that uh, they were the ones. In other words, Japan. The war with Japan was already over. Basically, there was no need to drop the bombs. But because there's the unseen hand going on, and and also Japan really didn't lose the war. If we look at the work of, I believe it's Don, Donald Dietrich. DonaldDietrich.com, or else it's Douglas Dietrich. I get confused sometimes. DouglasDietrich.com or Donald, and um, and you'll find out how Japan and Germany really won the war. That's why we got all these Nazis here running NASA and everything. But um, basically, what it was was they um, wanted to uh, the the Brotherhood of Death wanted to have a ritual sacrifice, and they wanted to uh, destroy in Japan uh, to be able to have an an excuse. Uh, to do that, uh, to um, basically drop these bombs to, for the first time in history uh, of record our modern recorded history, to drop atomic bombs supposedly, and then at the same time to wipe out the two main um, civilizations in uh, Japan that were predominantly Christian, predominantly Christian, living in peace for several hundred years, along with Buddhism and all the other. Uh, ancient Japanese cultures. So what this really was was a ritual sacrifice with these two atomic bombs to destroy uh, Christianity to get back uh, um, closer, destroy oh. the publishing house for all the uh, Christian uh, material there in one of those cities. And not only that, but the uh, the American 
uh, POWs were actually there in one of these two cities as well. So they uh, they were willing to, to kill their own in order to kill all the Christian uh, communities within Japan at the same time. So that was a ritual, blood sacrifice. The war was over, but they had to do it just to um, satisfy their bloodthirsty, psychopathic uh, agenda. Wow. So, so that's the secret of Nagasaki, yeah? Huh? That's some terrible secret, all right? Yeah, yeah. Doug, uh, uh, he put his... He's, this, he's a brave uh, man coming out like this yeah. with this work. He's uh, doing a great job. You know, there's some really great people. Even uh, uh, Dane Wigington of uh, geoengineeringwatch.org. Uh, he's on the front line uh -oh. right now revealing the, uh -oh. uh, the catastrophes that are occurring uh, physically on our planet with uh, the geoengineering and the uh, aerosol spraying, the methane gas rising now. It looks like we're about... Uh, all right on the threshold of um, uh, global annihilation. Forget the politics. It's going to be natural what's about to happen. And maybe that's why they got 100 underground bases in America alone, because they've got all their provisions and they're good to go. We'll be on top, um, you know, toughing it out with whatever's about to happen. Okay, it looks like we lost Patricia on the Skype here. And you went sort of in a different picture. So let's see, what would be your take home message? Uh, does it all? What would be your take-home message? Yeah, and, and, and everybody calls me uh, Desert, Don. You can call, just call me Desert. Um, well, it really, it, to me, it really comes down to that we have to identify with our eternal being, that we're, we're, our, our physical nature is the illusion. The, 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 the world is a, a matrix. Their, their terminology they like to use about third world, they, we always think when they talk about the third world, where they're talking about some South American um, country that's in poverty or something, but the, tr the third world is a metaphor. And the third, the third world is the world that they created. That is the matrix. And so to wake up uh, to our true nature, that we are eternal beings, that we are spirit inside, and that we, um, the one who made the entire universe has attempted to communicate with us through the sacred scriptures, uh, in particular the ones that came out of Jerusalem. Uh, certainly the, the great breath of the wind of fire or the Holy Spirit, um, the great breath has been communicating with us from the beginning of time uh, and with all cultures, but the cultures always became corrupted with priesthoods. Uh, so there's always been some truth, but it's always been kicked in the dirt and, and covered up by the... Uh, the uh, the occultists who hate the light, they're in the darkness, they pretend to be the light. And so we've got to wake up to this uh, higher truth and study the scriptures, get on our knees, uh, go inward and and, um, and ask for the light of the Heavenly Father and Yeshua, the Mashiach, the, the Redeemer of the world, because uh, the light will shine through. The, light, the, the darkness is so great, it's just like nighttime, yet these little points of light are out there and they're, 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 they're the first points that were used for navigation on the high sea. So the stars are our navigators. They originally told the story about creation and about the one who was to come uh, to give us truth. And um, and he did come 2,000 years ago. And so it's it, we've got to become scholars. We've got to learn how to read for ourselves to um, and to sift through it all and, and to get away and to get, uh, get alone and away from all of this uh, confusion, all the uh, the doctrine, the, the the disinformation of double agents that are covering, you know, like the flat Earth and uh, and um, uh, you know, it's just it's just endless. The zeitgeist that wants to say that the story of Yeshua or Jesus was just some type of cosmic uh, story. Uh, well, you know, it is a cosmic story, but it also follows a maxim that uh, the microcosm is a reflection of the macrocosm. The macrocosm is a reflection of the microcosm. So that which is above is that which is below. So the stars were telling the story of the Redeemer that was to come to the earth 2,000 years ago, and he gave his life as a sacrifice. He'd been coming before that. He was Melchizedek. He was here. They uh, He was commissioned to make the Great Pyramid. Another cover-up is the Great Pyramid of Giza. It was made by the one who made the cosmos, designed by him, and then made by Melchizedek prior to the flood to be left as a monument and a statement. No hieroglyphics in there. No mummies buried in there. All the, the, the geometric measurements 
all of the numbers that are associated with it, the pi, the circle, the, it's all there. It's the dimensions of our Earth, the, 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 the moon, the dimensions of the distance between us and the sun. It's, it's all in the makeup of the Great Giza Pyramid made by Melchizedek, and it said that he conquered his enemies without ever pulling out the sword. And it was made just prior to the building of the Ark, and after they built the Great Pyramid, it took them about 120 years. They then spent 120 years building the Ark, and that's how they um, left the, the Old World, and that was a remnant of the Old World, and it's the greatest cover-up next to the diction itself, our, our method of communicating, and the uh, fact that there never was in Egypt. It's a late coming fiction. It's all the great illusion. And, um, and that's a story for another day, I guess. So I'll just uh, thank you all for having me on. Oh, yeah. I'm very oh, honored to uh, be here. Okay, I got one question for you. So uh, this, uh, this might be heretical, but uh, is it Jesus Christ that we know in the Bible? Is he the one that was created by the Lord or is he created by the Council of Nicaea? Well, the, the original words for our Redeemer are not Jesus the Christ. These are uh, interpolations that uh, come out of the, uh, the the Greek in that sense. But uh, it's pretty well common knowledge that Jesus means the healing Zeus. That's Jesus. But in the word, we even have the word Isis, the hidden woman hiding within it. So, um, so but the, the, the good news is that even if we're using corrupt terms, our Redeemer is so great that he responds to our heart. So the but the what he's trying to do is wake us up right. to the original mm -hmm. terminology, right? And, and so so that's when we wake up and we say, oh wait a minute, you know it was Joshua, is the archetype of who Jesus was. And then wait a minute, but there's no J, it, uh, the original letter was a Y, so it's Yahshua. And then and then it goes a little further back into Yahshua and Va, or Yash, you know, And so it so there's this trail that I've been following back all these years. So. So even Christ, in other words, Jesus Christ is, is uh, you know, Zeus, Krishna. Christ is Krishna. You see, so they got us following occultic terms that belong to them, have nothing to do with us, but the beauty of our Redeemer, he knows what they've done to us. And in Revelations, it's referred as the, uh, you might remember, um, actually I tagged it in my book, so I would have quick reference to it, but they are... Uh, referred to as um, names of blasphemy, okay? Names of blasphemy in, um, you'd have to go look in, uh, here it is, uh, the star where I got the footnote here, where is that? Uh, oh, was upon the earth. Well, just uh, read uh, chapter 12 and 13 of, uh, of Revelations, and in there it refers to the, I don't have, um, I got too many notes in here to look at it real quick. Oh, here we go, here we go. It's uh, 13, uh, 13, 1, okay, and uh, and these, uh, the heads of the beast had the names of blasphemy on them, and so these are word, not just names of blasphemy, but words of blasphemy, uh, in other words, um, you know, the, uh, the, uh, the word believe, somebody says, uh, you know, I believe in Jesus, well, believe, if you look in the Latin dictionary, means to give little credit to something, Mm -hmm. So when somebody just said, I believe in Jesus, they just said, I give a little credit to him. You see, it's an occult, mind control term. We don't know what we say if we don't know what we mean, or we don't know what we mean if we don't know what we're saying. You see, yeah. that's that's the spell. Because they have no the occult have no real supernatural power. And so when it's put the, the terminology would be is that they put us under the spell. Well, it's because they control the words and we don't know the real meaning and the real spelling of words. That's the spell, and we can be set free from right. it. That's the good news. Just like in the Messianic tradition, um, you know, they're in their uh, the, what they call the Jewish New Testament, New Jewish Bible. In there, they call the Redeemer Yeshua, not Yahshua, but Yeshua. And it was George Howard who gave gave us the Shem Tov version of the uh, the uh, the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew, hidden in the ar archives and libraries of all the Jews. Because they stole the Hebrew Gospel of Matthew, um, in the term, in the he said in the Babylonian Talmud, uh, the word Yeshua means may his name be blotted out forever. Sounds like a curse, doesn't it? May his name be blotted yep. out. So every time the Messianic Jews are saying Yeshua, Y E S H U A H, they're using a Babylonian 
Talmudic term that that uh, desecrates our Redeemer. So it's an occultic world, an occultic uh, terminology. We're using their terminology. They engineered our vocabulary. It's not by accident. The King James was standardized by Francis Bacon, who also went under the pen name Shakespeare, also known as the Spear Shaker. And if you look in uh, chapter uh, chapter 46 of uh, of the book of Psalms, chapter 46, count down 46 words, you get shake, count up from the bottom, 46 words, you get spear. There's Shakespeare, his little signature right in there on uh, chapter 46 of Psalm, Psalm 46. And so what I was about to say was that they had to create the uh, standardization for English, English, because they were going to use England as their platform for the next wave of their one world order, uh, a tiny little island that supposedly conquered the world, whereas they only had 250 sh ships and the Jesuits in, in, uh, in uh, Holland and the Dutch had 2,500 ships. They were the ones really conquering the world. And then they put their little puppet state of England in the port after they already conquered it uh, with their secret agencies and Jesuits. But um, the, the, so the uh, English at the time uh, the Norman Franks took over in 1066 was a hodgepodge of, of uh, Scandinavian, uh, Old High German, uh, French, uh, and then Old English. And you had a real mixture. And so one little community was speaking something totally different. It was, it was all mixed up. So the, uh, they stole the translation of the Greek by Tyndale, and then they just made it their occultic uh, document by putting in their life, the code, like I just told you with Francis Bacon, and other codes that I, I can point out in there. And uh, King James was an occultist. He was a Freemason. He wrote the Book of Beasts before he uh, wrote the, uh, uh, or took credit for the King James Version. But basically what the King James Version did was to standardize the English of the day. That's because everybody got the Bible, everybody uh, was following religion, and therefore that created standardization and then that became the platform for, um, you know, they're, they're uh, entering in the next phase of the one world order where now, you know, everybody speaks English, right? They, they're trying to create a universal one world. And, I, and if you read in the, uh, the, uh, the uh, universal uh, dictionary, English dictionary from 1933, interesting time, interesting date when a lot happened, the New Deal, uh, it said in there that, the, uh, 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 that uh, under the term uh, one world, language, I believe it said, uh, it uh, said that uh, it was a language designed, uh, manufactured, manufactured for uh, one world use. So, so they're acknowledging in the Universal Dictionary out of England, uh, 1933, that a, 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 a one world language was in design for, uh, you know, controlling the world. Uh, so it's, uh, they're hiding in, in, you know, everywhere we can turn in, you know, in our dictionaries and our books, um, so again, study symbolism and, uh, and start studying original words. Get past the Hebrew and Greek because they're run, they're run by the priesthood. They were the diversion. Get back to the original Indo-Germanic mother tongue. Uh, most people don't recognize, realize that whether you're talking about Greek, San, pseudo-Sanskrit, but they call it Sanskrit, uh, German, Latin, Portuguese, English, English, uh, Dutch, Scandinavian, it is all Indo-Germanic, all comes back from a, a primitive root before the flood. And if we go, if we bypass the priesthoods that control the Greek and control the uh, Hebrew, we can get back to the original thought. And that's what I, uh, the terminology I coined for my transliteration project is original thought, because that's what we want, is what do they mean when they said what they were saying? And, and, and it's, and one word is not one word transliterated in modern. It's an idea, it's a concept, it's a thought, precepts. So one word from ancient could potentially be 10 words easily in the modern. And that's the trickery, again, that they played on us. And they locked in our, uh, our translations into what they wanted us to read and not what it's really saying. And that's where we really have to get on our knees and pray. And, um, but uh, for our Fenton, is the best modern day translation you can get today from 1905 for our Fenton. Okay, .com. artisanpublishers.com. Get the most important translation of scriptures in modern time to date, and uh, I highly recommend it. Wow, 
Oh. Uh, that interesting. Uh, I know on the, the pyramids you mentioned, if you take a look, and by the way, sorry, folks, I was gone for a while. They threw me off again. Uh, what you find is that the pyramid is built so that at winter solstice, it sh shows directly to Orion. In other words, the message of the pyramid was watch out for Orion. Uh, because at the, the most bitter time will be from Orion. And so much more of what he was saying, I'd, I'd like time to get, to, you know, talk to him further. Because my family, my ninth great grandfather, um, King James the sixth and first, uh, got in big trouble over that Bible. God is so serious about you know, doing it right. And yes, I know uh, it was, uh, it had major frailties. And well, although he keeps talking no, about. Hmm? Hmm? No, no, finish your thought and I'll jump in. Okay. He, he, and, uh, yeah, I know that the, like, even the Georgia Guidestones has, they seek to have one world, you know, uh, language. And they have been trying very hard to do exactly that, but of course they are in the midst of controlling everyone. So much so that, you know, even the use of technology to make them look powerful, it's, it's all a ploy to try to take you away from the one which you got, you know, in knowing Jesus did what he did for you, each and every one of you. If you try to let them, you know, tell you and not use the discernment of God, good luck in your life. Go ahead. You, you say. Well, I just wanted to add on the, uh, the thing about symbolism again, because if we uh, look at the symbolism of what King James did, and if what, it, the, what he did was a benevolent act towards the great father of light, uh, who people call Yahweh, it's more correctly Yavolhe. You can hear the German influence there, Yavolhe. Uh, and, um, and his son Yeshua, uh, well, then it said that he would be, um, as it says in the scriptures, he would be blessed like down to the third generation. Blessed is another occultic word I won't get into at the moment, but uh, that he would be uh, benefited because he did a benevolent work, if he brought this translation with an honest intention. But what happened? Um, there's a terminology in the Old Covenant that talks about having your lamp put out. Having your lamp put out means to be have your seed line cut off from you. And so, so, his, uh, so King James was um, uh, not well, shortly after the King James Version uh, dethroned. Um, he's been held in uh, disdain and not liked by the English people, the British people, for some reason. I don't remember the story, but I know that basic uh, premise. And, uh, and then ultimately his son Charles uh, becomes king of England. And shortly after Charles is king of England, he has his head cut off because they don't Four hundred want... years paid the consequences, yes. Yeah, and that means to have your lamp put out. So, so that's the symbolism that the great father is telling us that this was not benevolent what they had given us but was a cultic and had another agenda behind it to control mankind wait a minute it, one minute oh, oh, oh i didn't realize it was that short uh, folks uh, please uh, and pray to get the discernment to visualize what we you need to know and what we need to know this we need to work together on getting all of this sorted out we need this pieces from each and every one of you. Please try to contact us with whatever information you've got available because we need to know what is what. Do you have final word, uh, Desert? Just thank you for having me on. I know the clock's ticking, and thank you, Don, for uh, engineering today. Thank I you did so what much. I could. There's a real challenge here. So I thank you all for, for coming in and watching our show. Uh, I think you've you, you got to get this one down here. You, there's so much to learn here, things that we don't know about the forbidden history and things. So thank you so much, Desert. It, we're, we are, I think, lost in the desert without uh, knowing the truth here. And the truth is, it's, uh, I guess God has no religion, but he's the almighty creator. And, and our interpretation of, of him and, and things is, is what makes religions. And, uh, and, and somehow those get political and they get to be bad and it gets all worked into uh, 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 things that are not good for us by the powers that be. Yeah. Okay, that, that's we don't it. want to let them divide and conquer. We need the the real truth. Yeah, that's right. 